give you time to make a decision. They will give you literature to help you make that decision. So always be very wary of now or never opportunities. So we're going to take a look at some of the various ways that con artists specifically target seniors. We're going to look at examples of scams that we're seeing and some that have been running now for several years. So I spoke about the lottery earlier. And so, again, if you get a call or some other communication about uh, winning a foreign lottery, be extremely wary. And these scams usually operate in one of three following ways. They ask you to send money, they ask you to forward money to pay the taxes for your winnings in advance. People fall for this all the time, you get calls about this all the time. People wire thousands of dollars thinking that they're going to receive their winnings once they do it. it. Never happens. It's always a bad idea to wire money to someone who you do not know. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Do you need audio? Uh, you I'm not not I think he might. I'm going to need audio. Yeah, this is, okay. My apologies. Thank you very much. Um, secondly, they may ask you for your banking information so that they can make a direct deposit. Right? Everybody loves the convenience of a direct deposit, but once you provide your banking information, what we've seen time after time is that they have access to your funds. So we've got calls from people who have uh, lost substantial amounts of money because they provided a lot of their financial banking information. Um, so that goes to the point that you should never wire money to someone who you do not know. Oftentimes, people get a phone call from what seems to be an official sounding government agency. We hear that all the time as well. And so we've heard scammers call saying that they're from the National Sweepstakes Bureau. Okay, there is no National Sweepstakes Bureau. We've also heard complaints about getting calls from the, the National Consumer Protection Agency. That, sound, that sounds credible to me. There is no National Consumer Protection Agency. And so if you get a call from what seems to be an official sounding government agency, ask them for their number and uh, make the effort to call back. Do a little bit of homework and see whether or not that's an actual agency or not. Battery's very low. That's my phone. Okay. It's also important to know that in the United States, it's illegal for any sweepstakes to require you to purchase merchandise in order to win or to increase your odds of winning. And so if you're approached by a sweepstakes and you're told that your chances of winning will be increased if you subscribe to a magazine, uh, that's illegal throughout the United States. You do not have to subscribe in order to increase your chances of winning. Fake check scam. Uh, this is an actual check um, that was used to scam someone. And so oftentimes with this scam, you're asked to deposit a check and immediately wire part of that money to the person who's providing it to you. Right, so this check is for $11,500. And so if you're asked to forward three or $4,000 for an $11,500 check and keep the rest, you might be inclined to do that. But we're seeing that there's no money behind these checks. You deposit the check and then you wire a portion of it to the scam artist. Let's say half of the amount. When the check bounces, you've lost not only the amount that you've wired to the scam artist, but you're responsible for the full value of the check. So again, if you look, if you get a check in the mail from a source that you're not familiar with, attractive as it seems, if you're not sure about the validity of the check, feel free to call our office. And we're going to provide the information, the contact information for the office involved. Well, we might have lost
lost our PowerPoint presentation. Oh, we have to ask a question. Um, let me get through this okay. and then go to the next question. Let me just ask one of those gentlemen. Okay, so again, with prizes and sweepstakes, there are some general things to keep in mind. Never pay to collect prize money. Legitimate lotteries or sweepstakes deduct the amount that you owe to the IRS before you get the money, not after you get the money, or you will have to fill out multiple forms directly to the IRS. Don't necessarily rely on caller ID. So a moment ago I spoke about getting a call from an official government agency. Scam artists who are real good will be able to manipulate the call that's being made so that your caller ID will uh, identify a call from a 202 area code. 202 is Washington, D.C., okay? You're not getting a call in most instances from Washington, D.C. They're able to manipulate caller ID so that the area code means 202, although they're not in Washington, D.C. Again, you don't have to buy a magazine subscription or buy anything else in order to enhance your chances of winning. That's illegal in the United States. And we ask you to just, you know, be a friend to your neighbors who may have been scammed. Um, please refer them to our office um, or to NYPD. Collaborate very closely with NYPD. Um, encourage them to come forward to law enforcement. Seniors in particular should not be reluctant or feel embarrassed about coming forward to law enforcement. So I spoke earlier about a scam that concerns grandparents, it focuses on grandparents. So the scam typically runs like this. You get a phone call typically in the middle of the night, or in the middle of your sleep, and you're awakened by a call, and it's typically a male voice. And the mail says to you that they're in a foreign country and either one of three things has happened to him. A, he was arrested. B, he needs medical treatment. Or C, he has car trouble. He always never has any money and so they'll ask whether you can wire money to him right away. And this last line is always used. Please don't tell mom or dad. I don't want to get in trouble. Why do you think they tell people, don't tell mom or dad? Because mom or dad will say, hey, that's not true, because they'll probably know where that kid is. They'll say, I just saw her five minutes ago, right? Grandparent might call the parent, and the parent's like, no, he's here, right? So key to the scam is don't call mom and dad. I don't want to get in trouble. So here again, the scam is always the same. It's a call in the middle of the night. You're ready for bad news when you get a call at one or two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, right? When you're awakened at two o'clock in the morning, you don't have your wits about you. So even if the person doesn't sound like your grandson, chances are you might say something like, "Is this Jason?" Right? You use the name of the grandchild. They're way ahead of me. Yes, yes, that's me, it's Jason, right? And so, um, uh, so we ran out of batteries. Yeah, we want to charge it. Okay. Uh, this was here when I got So, this scam is so prevalent that my father got a grandparent with scam call. And my, my father has three grandchildren, and they're all female. And so he gets a call really late at night, and it's grandpa, it's me, your grandson. My father's like, I don't have any grandsons. I have all granddaughters. Boom, right? It's okay to be rude to a scam artist who calls you in the middle of the night trying to pull the grandparent scam, or any other time. It's okay to just hang up. A lot of people just continue on the phone. You know, want to engage, don't engage. Just hang up. Okay. 
Um, phone calls. So think of the phone as a one-way street, right? You only give your personal information when you make the call to a bank or other institution. Never, never give personal information, banking information to someone who calls you. And we see this all the time as well. So use caller ID as a screening tool. My parents are masters of this. They never pick up the phone. Never pick up the phone. Only answer the call if you recognize the telephone call. Okay, I'm at my parents' house all the time. They never pick up the phone. They rely on getting voicemail. And so that's the last point. Otherwise, let the phone ring and let it go to voicemail and let's see who it is. Okay. So I spoke earlier about taking control, and so one way that you can take control to protect yourself is to register for certain do, uh, do not contact registries. And so this would be great if we get this graphic on the screen. So I know I've been the recipient of many annoying phone calls from telemarketers, particularly when I don't want to hear from anyone. And so, um, how many of you are already registered with the Do Not Call registry? Okay, very good. So, people who don't want to receive annoying telemarketing calls can register their home or cell number, and telemarketers are therefore prohibited from calling you. And we're gonna get this graphic up in a moment, hopefully. Um, and there are two other uh, registries that I wanna share with you that are, I think, very helpful. So the first one is called Opt Out. And with that, you can take your name or credit card and insurance offers, right? Another site that limits direct mail is called DMA Choice. And that site will take you off a list for catalogs and other mail solicitations. And um, all of this information is contained in our pamphlet. So if you go downstairs to registration is, uh, we have plenty of copies for those. Please feel free to take one. Everything that I'm discussing is in that pamphlet. So if you missed anything that I've said, uh, the pamphlet will have it. How are we doing? So if you want to register for the Do Not Call registry, you can call or go online. The telephone number is 888. 382-1222. It's 888-382-1222. Or go on to www.donotcall.gov. If you want to contact opt out, so you can opt out of credit card and insurance office offers, the number is 888-567-6888. 888-567-8688 or you can go online to www.optoutprescreen.com The last one I mentioned is DMA Choice and you have to go online to www.dmachoice.org So another area where we see people getting scammed all the time, this is not just for seniors, but for the general population, concerns home improvement contractors. And so the scam typically goes like this. You get a knock on a door, you get a phone call from a contractor, and they inform you that they have leftover material, right? And so they're presenting you an opportunity to get leftover material at a good uh, price, and if you pay them cash right away, uh, they can go and do the job right away. And so earlier I said, don't ever feel pressured for a now or never opportunity. Because now or not, a now or never opportunity very typically is a scam. So if a contractor knocks on your door, you have excess materials, you gotta decide now whether you want it, it might be a scam. It's a good chance that it's a scam. Home contractors are a problem all the time. My 
brother recently had a problem with the home contractor. It's a very big area for the Attorney General statewide. So you don't want to just hire someone who knocks on your door with uh, excess material. You want to do a lot of homework. So you want to shop around. You want to get recommendations from people who you know and trust. You want to get at least three estimates for any job. You want to check with the Better Business Bureau to see if there are any complaints against that contractor. Some cities, small municipalities have um, offices like the New York City Department of Consumer Affairs. There might be a local consumer affairs office. You may want to check with them to see uh, whether there have been any complaints against a contractor. Always get a detailed written contract from a contractor. In New York State, any job that costs more than $500 requires a written contract by law. Okay, $500 job is nothing in New York. Never be pressured into signing a certificate of completion until you're sure that all the work has been completed to your satisfaction. And never pay the full amount up front. And when it comes to paying, negotiate a payment schedule tied to progress on the job, right? As they make increments on the job, you will pay along the way uh, until they finish. Always try to pay by credit card. If the contractor doesn't want to do it by credit card, insist on paying by check. We advise that people never pay a contractor by cash. How are we doing? talk about internet safety. So passwords are critical. You don't use a password that includes your personal information. It should be a password that's difficult for other people to figure out. And so never use a password that has your birth date. <coughs> never use a password that includes your social security number or your mother's maiden name. Those are three critical sources of information that will that will put you in financial ruin. Right? Those are what scam artists want, and so your password should not have any of those sources of information. You should use different passwords for different things. Don't use the password, the same password for everything. And so if someone manages to break a code for your email, for example, and it's the same password for your banking information, you're really raising your, your, uh, your being at risk. Confident scam artists will figure out where you bank and will use a password that they've already obtained for something else. Okay. Social media, right? A lot of people use social media. And so, some of the things that we recommend when it comes to social media is make your photos and information available to only to people that you friended and be very uh, cautious about who you friend. Don't friend people that you don't know. Don't friend someone who claims to be a friend of someone that you know. Okay? A good scam artist uh, will access your social media, see who you friended, and then will claim that they know that person. Never post your birthday on social media. Never reveal your home address or your telephone number. And importantly, never talk about your being on vacation for two weeks at the start of your vacation, right? People don't need to know that you're not home for an extended period of time. <coughs> How are we doing? Yeah. Sorry, we're not there. Okay. <coughs> These graphics will come in handy, but okay. So, security measures online. So if you're the kind of person who likes to shop online, do your personal banking online, you need to make sure that there's an S in the protocol for the website. And so you want to make sure that a website that you're going to shop from, or that you're going to do banking, or otherwise expose your financial or personal information, starts with HTTPS, and the S is critical. The S will inform you that it's a secure site. So 
So there are plenty of websites that are only HTTP, right? You see that, it's not a secure website. You need to see the S at the end. When you shop online, always pay by credit card, not a debit card. That's really key. Always use a credit card, not a debit card, because your liability with a credit card is very limited. Um, and so if you do use a credit card and you've been scammed, uh, you're only liable for $50 of fraudulent charges. If you buy with a debit card and they're able to access your bank card, I mean your banking information through that card, they have free reign over the money that's in the account. So we very uh, strongly encourage people never to use a debit card when shopping online. Gone phishing. So phishing is another issue with online uh, activity. I've seen plenty of phishing in my time. So phishing is an attempt to acquire information such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details by someone who sends you an email or text masquerading as a trustworthy entity. So for example, I've gotten plenty of emails purporting to be from banks. And the ones that I've gotten the most are from KeyBank. And it does look very official. They're very good at lifting the logo. They're very good at using the same font that the company uses. And you know, it's very easy to be swept in by that because it looks so legit. Um, and so I've also seen the same from Chase Bank, which is where I bank. Um, and so if we get an email that reports to be from a bank and they're requesting your personal information, the email might report that um, your account might, might have been compromised. Please confirm your banking information, right? That's a scam, right? Never give your personal banking information uh, through an email or a phone call, okay? All right, so that's phishing. Identity theft is the fastest growing financial crime in the United States. And so thieves, oftentimes get hold of your personal information by going through your trash. Uh, they might go through the trash at a store or a restaurant. You might make a credit card purchase, excuse me, at a doctor's office or over the internet. And so three really critical pieces of information that you need to protect are your social security number, your date of birth, and your mother's maiden name. So scam artists who gets one, two, and certainly all three can do tremendous financial ruin. They can open up a credit card in your name. They can go to a bank and secure, or go online and secure a mortgage, right? You don't want to have to deal with the headache of undoing that because it can take a very, very long time. And nobody wants to un, you know, experience the stress and the time that it takes to do that. Um, and so things that we recommend is to buy a shredder and shred all of your personal documents. It's not enough to tear it in half and throw it in the garbage. Safeguard your personal information. Um, if you are in a situation where you're, uh, you, know, you have a home, you have a mailbox, don't put your bills in the mailbox because scam artists may get to it before the mailman does. Never carry your social security card. Commit your social security number to memory. Right? If you lose your wallet or your purse and your social security number is up in there, your name is on that card as well. Uh, review your bank and credit card statements carefully each month. This is critical. I do this, and I do it in particular because I saw a $350 credit uh, charge on one of my credit cards for steak knives that were purchased in Switzerland. And I kept looking at it, and I, you know, why is that charge on my on my statement? You know, could I possibly have purchased 
Oh, of course I didn't purchase steak knives. I would know if I purchased steak knives from Switzerland. So I called the credit card and we were able to get that charge off of my credit card. Uh, so it's important to go through your statements. Don't just assume that every charge on there is legitimate. How are we doing? Mm -hmm. Towards the end, we're good. Okay. <coughs> um, so I'm on the page that reads identity theft. It's towards the end. So everyone is entitled every year to a free credit report, and it's important that you access that. When you do get your free credit report, take the time to review it very carefully. Check for accounts or addresses that you do not recognize, uh, or any information that is inaccurate in any way. Okay? And if you uh, want to access getting a free credit report, go on to this website. It's, uh, no. It's not on the screen. It's www.annualcreditreport.com. www.annualcreditreport.com or call 1-877-322-8228. This is the fastest way to determine whether your banking or other financial uh, resources have been compromised. So it's worth the time to get the report. Charitable giving. So New Yorkers contribute $10 billion every year to charitable organizations. And most charities are uh, trustworthy organizations, but there are some uh, that misuse fundraising methods. They look to victimize people who want to contribute. And so I'm just going to go over very quickly some things that you need to keep in mind if you're going to contribute to a charity. So the first thing you want to make sure is that you know the charity well, and you know what its aims and programs are. So scam artists uh, will frequently use a slightly different name in the charity that you want to contribute to, knowing that you may, might make a mistake and contribute to their, to their scam. Uh, be, war be wary if an organization will not provide written information about its charitable programs and finances upon request. I do this all the time. Many times I'm stopped on the street, I'm asked to contribute for a wildlife organization or some environmental organization, and I always ask, do you have any literature that I could take with me so I could read it and decide whether I want to? Almost always, they don't. And if they don't, I'm not going to make a contribution. I'm not going to take the time to try to research the organization. They should have these materials available. Confirm that the charity is registered with the Attorney General's Office. Every charitable organization in New York must be registered with the Attorney General's Office. And so the way to check is to go online to www.charitiesnys.com. If the charity is not registered with our Charities Bureau, you may not want to make a contribution to that organization. www.charitiesnys.com. You're welcome. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. So other tips, other tips concerning charitable giving. Again, never resist to contribute on the spot. There should never be a now or never pitch to contribute to a charitable organization. Avoid unsolicited emails from charitable organizations. More recently, people find it convenient to contribute via text or through social media, and so Although charities are increasingly using social media to obtain donations, unsolicited requests may not be associated with legitimate charities, and so always be super cautious uh, if you get a text or an email uh, concerning uh, donations. Obviously never get cash. If you 
get a call from a charitable organization, again, this is the obvious, but never give your social security number uh, over the phone or credit card or telephone uh, information, or additional telephone information. So I'm at the end of the presentation. And we'll try to cover our bases to inform folks how to stay safe, what to look out for, how to take control, like registering with these registries, and how to fight back. And reporting crime, reporting scams is critical. We cannot proceed unless we get complaints. And folks who are embarrassed or, you know, for whatever reason, don't want to come to us, you know, they need to be convinced. They need to, they need to be convinced so that we can conduct the investigation we need to. Hopefully, bring justice to the people who are. Forming these scams and to protect the public. And so, this is our telephone number if you want to report a scam to the Attorney General. That's the number to call. And there's a lot of information on our website as well. So, is there any questions? Yes. Um, with experience, with experience getting attacked, I think with experience, yes. I'll echo that. Um, what can one do? Because I was one of those people before. Which one answer that? There's uh, three reporting agencies out there, if not maybe one more that I'm not, I can't name, but that you definitely want to keep on top of your information. Like Mr. LeBron said, you have to constantly monitor your bank statements, and that's something that I'm mm -hmm. always guilty of not doing. And you'd be surprised, you take, you take a lot for granted. I mean, you really do. You just, take people at face value, take companies at face value. But if you start monitoring your own information, at that point, if anything is slightly as skew, as something's not gonna be there, if you did not buy those steak knives in Switzerland, guess what? Who's gonna be the first person to no notice it? It'll be you. And at that point, you can take some action. I would keep faith in the other reporting agencies and be guided by that uh, company's uh, remedy to, the, to their problem. They're a big company. We live in a we live in a very safe world. We live in a dangerous world. Technology. Everyone's walking around with the phones, and it's a great thing. It's a great thing until a hundred million people get hacked. But we have, you do have to keep faith. Um, they are on top of it. They have anti uh, phishing software. They have all this great, great stuff to stop that from happening. But every once in a while, we have things like that happen. But when things like that happen, the companies themselves, the IT people, they learn from it. They, they install measures for that never to happen again. This is a constant evolution. What he talked about, he named, how many scams did he name? There's so many of them, right? And that's the amazing thing to me. I mean, we come out, I've been doing this a long time. Mr. LeBron's been doing this a long time. The minute we get ahead of the curve and we start talking about a particular scam, another one comes out. So education is key, keeping on top of your personal information. Let me just quickly say, and I'm reading from a press release, Attorney General James holds Equifax accountable by securing $600 million payment the largest data breach settlement in history. So contact our office. Okay? Oh, yeah, um, I filled out that form. I'm going to $125 at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. You have to, there's a form that you fill out all <clears throat> So if you've been victimized by Equifax uh, breach, um, contact our office. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Um, Earlier you stated no, that right your there. office no, that there's... Let me take this question. Oh, At the Adam Powell building, what floor? 13. Okay. I'm sorry, you were saying? So any scam from the credit report grows. It doesn't matter how long it takes, 10 years, 15 years, 30 years. For, for the... Credit report, credit report scam. Uh, report, they don't do good. Sir. I have the proof. I can say. I'm sorry. Credit report. Uh, they also don't do good things. Right. I became victim of. Uh, I'm not stupid idiot, but uh, in a point of view, I made a poor sign in the car. At one thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I didn't know at that time, I was, I was new at that time to the system. I just did it with humanity in front of you. You just to help somebody with all this. Then uh, nobody, anything financial transaction, nobody 
the three can take things. It's like the business. They won't disclose the recommend the signer. That's it. So it's really important to report a problem as soon as you learn right. it. So if this happened, then uh, I don't have another. <coughs> I was new to this company, the system. Then the guy uh, took the vehicle, fed away from New York to Delaware. Immediately. Immediately. Within one hour. Then uh, I don't know what is credit system, whatever it is. Then, um, then he started paying late. You will have to listen to these things. My friend is there, my friend is here. And I, so then he fed away. Then he didn't pay the what the whatever monthly installment four hundred fifty dollars in time. Every time one month, two months, three, three months late. And I don't know what is credit system, whatever it is. Uh, then uh, after six after six months and uh, eight months, then I started pulling my credit report, um, getting the feedback from my friends. You cannot believe one of the credit report that the report came in as if we had 148,000. I have a copy, sir. I was thinking to see you uh, in the office. Uh, as if we had a transaction around 148,000. dollars so How is it happening with the credit report? And uh, all the bank finance institutions, I have a, I'm not rude, but any financial people that talk about this, I don't believe on that. Even if I don't believe in the credit system, I'm sorry to say you like that. And I have the papers I will show you. Yeah, so why don't you bring it to our office? After so that, again, so again, sir, listen, I went to throw my one of friend to attorney. Attorney doesn't have I was totally new. Doesn't have uh, New Jersey license or a New York state. And this transaction happened in New Jersey. Uh, then my friend who recommended if he does not know New York license, New York license, New York license, then attorney, I'm sorry, sir, everyone's in the profession. Uh, then uh, he okay, I'll help you, whatever it is. Then he doesn't want to take uh, uh, check. Anytime you come in, you have to pay him two hundred dollars. I told him bring the money back, thirty five thousand dollars. Sir, what's your question? <laughs> the credit. It is scam. I'm don't talking about the scam. It is scam by the credit report. Just ask your questions. You can answer it. So, yeah, I, I, I think the better thing is to come visit our office, okay. bring all your documentation. Yeah. We'll sit through it and we'll. That is good for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. <clears throat> no, so you should always report as soon as possible. And if we see a pattern of fraud and we're investigating and we decide we want to bring the lawsuit. We try, to do that. How long we try to do that within three years. Three years, okay? Any other questions? Yes. Um, you mentioned that we shouldn't give out our birth date or address or phone number over the internet. But if I Google my name, it comes up my birth date, my address, my phone number, these different websites, mylife.com, spokeo.com. I mean, what can we do to stop them from putting our personal information all over the internet? I, I can answer that one. Yeah, um, right. What you have to do, go to the bottom of the page, or else just Google opt out of whoever it is. I have, and I've written to the companies telling them, you know, that they're creating, because I was a victim of domestic violence, I don't want all my personal information But But, but, just, but you just internet. have to keep writing with the Scorpio, I did that. And my information is off. So just keep keep Googling opt out of whoever your information is on yeah. and then fill out the form and just keep doing it. Or else let me do to report and they also have also false information on there. They're trying to get people to pay fourteen dollars to get a, a background report on an individual. They want you to pay that if you want to get your information taken off or if you want to see the actual report on yourself or someone else. <coughs> and then it, it's very misleading. It says this person may have a court or criminal records or all sorts of things. And I think that, that should, something should be done about that. So I'm going to give the number to the Harlem office. Okay. It's 212-364. Mm -hmm. 6010. Mm -hmm. 
We have mediation. We have mediators on staff uh, every day, all day, and uh, register a complaint, and we'll we'll pursue that. For you. Thank you. We have an internet bureau that often deals with these kinds of issues as well. I'm going to hand it over to Officer Morales. We're very patient for waiting. Thank you all for being Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ray Morales. I am a sergeant with the New York City Police Department's Community Affairs Bureau Crime Prevention Division. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, Mr. LeBron is going to be a very, very hard act to follow because he did cover a lot of material, and I hope that you absorb everything that he had to say. I know we're on a strict timetable here, so my presentation will not be as long, but hopefully it will be as informative. Again, I work for the Crime Prevention Division, and what do we do? We go out there, well, we analyze crime trends, like Mr. LeBron said, and that underscores the importance for us to know what's happening out there. We can't assume that the police department knows what's happening in your situation, in your situation, and you had mentioned the shame that comes along with uh, being the victim of a scam. I've been out there, I've, I've talked to not only seniors, and by the way, I thought this was a senior event, I don't see many, many seniors here, but that also is something that we're seeing now. When, when you used to ask me about phone scams five years ago, my mind would go to the senior community right away. It's not, not the case so much. We have people out there that are victims of these phone scams that are my age, younger, people that are educated people that are working very, very hard and they're losing their life savings in a matter of one phone call. He mentioned something that resonated with me that I like to underscore when I go out and speak to people. I want you to be rude, okay? We live in New York City, we have a, sometimes a bad reputation of being rude, but when it comes to that unsolicited phone call that you did not initiate when you're sitting in the safety of your own home, I want you to be rude. I want you to remember me standing up here right now and saying, it's okay to hang up. It's our human nature, especially as we get older, as I get older. You learn, you evolve, and try to be a little bit more kind to your fellow person. It's so much, so difficult to say, I'm sorry, I have to go. It's, I've been there. And they follow a script. He probably has a copy of the script. That's incredible. They can tell any story at any time. It's constantly evolving, but I, again, I'm coming back to the fact that I want you to be rude. I want you to hang up the phone and get enough phone call for, for, that, for that particular scam. If you didn't make that phone call and you know it's a scam, I have, I'm going to try to uh, put this in there. I'm a little challenged, so I don't know how successful I, I'll be, but we have some samples of the phone calls that you're going to receive. But forget about the phone call, the phone call, and the safety of your own home. You get a knock on the door, and you're not expecting a visitor. What do I want you to do? Not answer the door. Well, no, no, you can answer the door. I don't want you to open the door. Actually. I want you to use the people. Okay? New York is the safest big city in the nation. That's due in large part to our partnership with the community. Everyone in this room, everyone that cares enough to come out to events like this, everyone that cares enough to pick up the phone and say, hey, NYPD, there's something going on at this corner that really doesn't make sense to me. I live here. You live in your block. You live, You know more on, about your block than I do. I could be assigned to that every day, but every day you are there. You know what's going on. You know what time Mr. and Mrs. Smith bring Johnny up to school, what time they're doing shopping. Everyone has a mayor in the block, right? Everyone know them? They know everyone's business? Oh, you're the mayor? <laughs> you're the mayor. So there you go. You're the person I want to know when something happens on that block. Because you're going to be a wealth of information. You're going to come to me and say, I know. I saw that car, and hopefully you're going to be astute enough to write down the plate, because that's a lead for us. Again, you can't assume we know. I'm going all over the place because a lot of the stuff he said, I mean, everything he said, made a lot of sense. And we work closely together. I, we're, we're more uh, boots on the ground, so to speak, and when we come out as part of the Crime Prevention Division, we come out and we speak to groups like this, we talk to community councils, we talk to anyone that's willing to listen, tenant associations, because our hope is to raise public awareness about what's going on out there. I'm gonna date myself now, but uh, back in the day there was a commercial about VO5 share proof. I don't know if you remember it or not. And the whole point of that commercial was, if you tell two friends, you'll tell two friends, 
and so on and so on. And that's exactly what we need. But that's kind of like what social media is about now. Pretty much you can press a button and you're telling thousands of people. But I'm not on social media and I get a lot of my information from people, neighbors. Wouldn't it be great if you can count on your neighbor, that mayor on the block, that said, you know what, I saw someone knocking on your door. Okay? I don't know if you were expecting a delivery or not. There are so many different things that we have to look at and be careful of on the internet, your personal information. Technology is a great thing. It's a fantastic thing. Look at where we are right now and what we can do from our phone, from our fingertips. The amount of information we can get, everyone here, we can get tons of information. All the websites you mentioned, they can Google your name, find out who you live, what car you drove, who you live with, what car you drove, where you lived previously. And guess what? If you have a bad mind, a nefarious mind, you can use that information for, for bad things. So in my world, in the police world, we like to think of a term, we use a term rather, called uh, DOA. Has everyone heard of that term? What's it mean? Dead. See, everyone thinks it means dead on arrival because yeah. of the police department. <laughs> in, in my world, it's a little bit different. DOA, and I, I searched the building for chalk, and there's not one piece of chalk in this entire college. But anyway, think like a bad guy or a bad, bad girl right now, okay? The D stands for desire. That bad guy or bad girl has to have the desire to want to commit that crime, right? Nothing we can do about that, and we're all the good people in this room. We got the D, desire. We're going to skip over the O now, because I'm going to ask everyone to take a guess at what that means. Now we go to the A. The A stands for ability. That same bad guy or girl has to have the ability to commit that crime. And years ago, before the city was as safe as it is now, does anyone remember how bad the city was? Or, uh, we had to worry about guns on the street and stuff like that. Not that we still don't worry about that, not to that degree, but now you're in the safety of your own home and you have to worry about that phone call. So it's a little bit different how the crimes are being committed now. So you have the desire, we skipped over the O, and we have the ability. So think like a bad guy or girl, you have the desire, the ability. Does anyone want to venture as to what that O means? Opportunity. Opportunity. And what I'm gonna to say to everyone in this room that we all have the ability to take that O out of that equation. Those are the three elements we need for a crime to be committed, okay? The bad guy or girl needs the desire, the opportunity, and the ability to commit that crime. Everyone here in this room, everyone here in the city has the ability to take that O out of the equation. If you take that O out of the equation, guess what? The crime cannot be committed. And that could be as simple as reporting. No, hanging up the phone, right? Is the opportunity there for you to get scammed? No, you're hanging up the phone because so you know better. The one thing that I am going to differ, the one bit of information that I'm sure he's basing it, is the caller ID part of it. We like to talk about not trusting caller ID because right now, technology being what it is and being so sophisticated, and our flyers say right here, they'll manipulate the caller ID. So you'll be sitting in the safety of your own home, Miss Mayor, and you're gonna get that phone call that Ray your second cousin is in the hospital. Look at the list of all the different ways these scams are. And I have news for you, all the different types of scams there are. As I'm speaking to you, there are four or five more that he's seen in reports and that we see in reports. It's a constant evolution, and we are ahead of the curve, but we have to educate people. Uh, so you're sitting at home, you get that phone call. They went on a website, they Googled your name, they found out exactly you know, where you live, how long, how many children you have, if you have what kind of car you drive, and they're going to use that information to help you. They're going to say, you know what, Ray is in the hospital. Or they're going to say, better yet, it's going to be Sergeant Morales. He's calling you right now to tell you that Ray is in the hospital. And he sounds like a, a, an authority figure. He sounds like Sergeant Morales from the, uh, from the 19th precinct. And guess what's going to be on your caller ID? And what's the name? 19th precinct. So we kind of ask people to be a little cautious of that, okay? So they're going to manipulate the caller ID. If you just bear with me for one quick second, I'm going to see if these videos play. If not, you just have me. Can I just pull this out? Without you? Of course. Yes. 
So DOA, desire, opportunity, and ability. We all, does anyone remember what room, room we're in? Right now? Fifth, thank you. I am the first person to forget where I am. What I'd like to ask is if anyone here, we're, we're all New Yorkers, obviously, right? And we all had our goal today. Mr. LeBron's goal was to get here for his appointed time. And, and in doing so, and being New Yorkers, we get tunnel vision. I, I suffer from it all the time. You get tunnel vision. We're focused on getting to room 150 at 4 o'clock so we can do our thing. Your focus is getting to the city of uh, the college at one o'clock so you can take advantage of the services that are being here. And in doing so, what, however you got it, drove, mass transit, tunnel vision. We're so focused on doing what we have to do, shopping, picking up the kids, picking up the grandkids, paying a bill, that we, we've got that tunnel vision. We're not seeing what's going on on the side of us. So I really want to implore, if you walk, walk away with anything, please, don't suffer from tunnel vision. Be, be aware of your situational awareness, okay? Like in this room, we know we're on the fifth floor. If stuff were to break out right now, would you know another way to get out of this building other than the elevator you came on? You would, so that's a very good thing. How many times, I have a 10 year old son, and it's true. Every time we go to the movie theater, guess where he's coming when we sit down? The exit. No, no, no. The exit. He's telling me that if uh, you know if the fight breaks out, I don't use the story if a fight breaks out or fire. I know where the exit is. That song in it. I know the way out. You have to do that. I'm that crazy person. And when I check into a hotel, and you're behind that door, and you see uh, you are here. The emergency exits are here. You're on the fifth floor. I'm that guy that takes that walk and goes down that stairs to make sure there's no obstructions. And I do that from personal experience. I mean, he had his. He had the. Someone ordered knives with his information, his personal identifiers in Switzerland. I'm in a hotel room in London at five in the morning with the alarm going off, and we had to evacuate. I had no idea where I was. So ever, ever since that point forward, I make it a point of checking where I am and where my emergency exits are. It's called being prepared and having situational awareness. I'm going off on a few things, so let me just uh, play this one if it does play. And again, I'm challenged. If you don't mind, yeah. When it says, uh, one in the second one, yeah. Phone scams. I passed out that card. I'm going to also pass out this book. We have one that is specific, specifically for seniors. They are downstairs. I just don't have them with me. But they cover pretty much basic safety tips. Tips that, as New Yorkers, we need to be reminded of every once in a while. Talking about situational awareness. When you're traveling to and from to the presentation, safety and numbers. When you're going home in car service or in public transportation, what to do to better protect yourself. All those tips are in here. Quick question for everyone here. By a show of hands. Well, first of all, has anyone ever had that feeling, that old cliche, he had mentioned of, it's too good to be true. How many times have you heard that, right? All right, and odds are. It's too good to be true. It's too good to be true. You shouldn't, you shouldn't succumb to that. I'm going to throw one at you now that says, uh, the hair in the back of my neck, so a feeling in my stomach. How many people have ever had that feeling? You know, that something wasn't right. Now keep your hands up if what you were feeling was true at the time. A lot of hands stayed up, right? You know why? It's your instincts telling you something. The other takeaway I want, if you remember anything here, is trust your instincts. If your instincts are telling you that phone call you're receiving is a bad phone call, hang up. The other thing is I told you I gave you permission to hang up, right? Please hang up the phone. You don't have to listen to people. You could be rude. Trust your instincts. If you're walking into an elevator and you feel it, again, you know your building. You know who belongs, who doesn't belong, who may be a visitor, but maybe you just you get that feeling. It's okay to be rude. It's okay to extract yourself from that elevator. Oh, I forgot to get my mail. Better to be safe. To get that knock on the door. Have that conversation from behind a locked door instead of opening the door. There's nothing written that says when you have to greet the person by opening the door. Because once you open the door, guess what? They're going to use force to try to get it. We're good? No sound, right? No. Mm, yeah. Okay. All right. This is just the phone scams that uh, Mr. LeBron talked about. And I talk about it all the time. 
This one happened to deal with, this was hot probably two or three months ago. This was the Chinese consulate scheme, where they call up and pretend it from the Chinese consulate, and of course they're soliciting money. Now, I want to show you, we talked about technology. This is my private phone, you can tell that it's dented. It's got all the scratches. And this is my NYPD department issued phone, iPhone. Very expensive, and it's got all these security protocols in it. Anything I do on this phone, the people in headquarters know. They know exactly what I'm doing. You think I get phone scam phone calls on this line? No. Every day. Every single day. I was saving them to voicemail, but I had to delete my files for a bit. But even with this secure phone, an NYPD issued phone, Mr. LeBron, do you get yours on your work? I do. On you do. And they're trying to hook you. They're sticking to their script. Just imagine a group of bad people in a room, each one with a desk, each one with a computer, looking up your last name, and again, your personal identifiers and everything about you that they could use in their story to scam you. Okay? So that was the uh, Chinese conflict scam. The other one that's more topical right now is the social security scam. Okay, that one it seems to be uh, far in front of all the others. Social Security. There's a problem with your Social Security account or your number. And it's the uh, scam is automated. It sounds like a robot. So, here's the audio from the other. Here's the audio from the 今天我在这里是想提醒一下大家我们最近收到很多中国领事馆诈骗的案子他们会把打电话给你微信给你然后就说或者留言给你如果你收到这些电话直接把它挂掉他们主要目的是想要拿你的银行卡名字公卡信用
How many people would bail out a sick relative using this? Doesn't make any sense, right? Too good to be true. Not too good to be true, but it just does You try, gotta trust your instincts in this one, right? Years ago, it was uh, Green Dot. Does anyone remember the Green Dot part? This was really hot and heavy. We did a lot of work with our retail partners. And we still work with our retail partners. So if they see anyone coming in to purchase any type of gift card, Green Dot, Green Dot Apple, if they see anyone coming in to purchase 10 cards for $500 each, not that they can't sell it to you, but based on our public awareness campaigns and us working with them, the, the associates at the store will ask, are you buying it? And they're equipped with these flyers, the ones I handed out. Excuse me, if you're buying it for any one of these reasons, you may want to rethink your purchase. And it gives the customer at that point pause to think about, All right, maybe I am being scammed. And we have a lot of success stories to that end. Now, what was mentioned in the video, and we don't have, we talked about technology. People are calling up now and saying, Bitcoin, you gotta pay your content bill by Bitcoin. They don't have to do that, they don't accept Bitcoin. But that's the other thing now. Well, why are transfer money? Now, the newest thing right now, let's forget everything we're talking about, forget about, te about technology. Guess what they're doing now? They have you on the hook. You're the senior, you're a non-senior, they have you on the hook for that scam. And guess what they're gonna do now? They're gonna come by and pick up the money. We have a few reports of people just coming by and picking up the cash. So you have to raise your awareness. You have to remove that opportunity from everything we do. Situational awareness, be aware of what's going on around you. Just try to envision every day that person you see walking the street, not looking what's going on. They're so worried about what's happening on the phone. They have no idea what's going on around them. They don't see uh, the person with the gun on the corner. Not that that happens often, but they don't see what's going on around them. You have to keep your head up. You have to walk confidently and walk like you know where you're going. Like, you gotta mess with me right now. Or if I'm walking like this, you know, I'm a little distracted, right? Oh, I work through PayPal. PayPal's another one. Pay PayPal is another one. How many here still write checks? Okay, one more, my last video, then I'm gonna go, I'll take any questions, but uh, Oh, yeah, the chain. The actor in this is extremely good looking. Hi, I'm Sergeant Raymond Morales from the New York City Police Department's Crime Prevention Division. I'm here with AARP's Associate State Director, Laura Eric. We're working together to help you prevent two scams that are spreading across New York City that can cost you thousands of dollars, mail phishing and check washing. The NYPD has seen a growing number of cases of mailbox phishing. With this scam, thieves steal mail right out of mailboxes, literally phishing it out with string, glue traps, and other sticky substances. Mail phishing gives thieves access to your personal information, putting your identity at risk. In many cases, mail fishers retrieve envelopes containing the checks you write to pay your rent or other bills. Using common household products, they can alter the checks, making them payable to themselves or others a crime known as check washing. Combined, these scams can compromise your identity and your hard-earned money. But there are ways to prevent mailbox phishing and check washing. When sending mail, especially sensitive information or checks, drop it directly at the post office or hand it to your mail carrier. If you use a mailbox, deposit your mail as close to the scheduled pickup time as possible. To prevent check washing, use a pen with pigmented or permanent ink to write out your checks. Or if you can, consider transferring money using other secure methods. Shred any voided or incorrectly written checks and review your account frequently to ensure your checks are cleared by the establishment that you wrote them out to. If you think you are the subject of either of these scams, don't be embarrassed. It can happen to anyone. Contact your bank if someone has altered or stolen your check or if you believe your account has been compromised in any way. You can also call the AARP Fraud Watch Helpline to share your story and receive assistance at 877-908-3360. Be sure to report these scams to your local police precinct or police service area, as well as the postal inspectors at 877-876-2455. We partner with them to combat crime involving the U.S. mail. Staying informed prevents crime. That helps keep us all safer and more secure. Thank you. Anyone 
know what you need to commit to mailbox fishing. If you go to the 99 cent store and buy a blue trap, a mouse blue trap, take your shoelace, try to peel that mouse blue trap back, tie it around a can of soda or a bottle of juice and drop it in the mailbox. And their hope is to have the mail stick to the glue trap. And they come up and they're hoping to find money or if they find the checks. I have a probably of the thought now, I'm going to do chain, that's what I'm going to leave on. I'm probably of the thought, thought uh, the mindset now that they're not going to check, wash your check. What they're going to do is take your routing number and take your, your uh, checking account number and just develop, print up a new set of checks. That, that check washing that they mentioned, it is simple. I've done it. What you take is acetone, which is nail polish remover. And if you, you don't, they mentioned using a, pig, a, a pen with pigment and ink, it's permanent ink. That, that uh, ink marries itself to the paper, the fibers of the paper. It, it, it's not a permanent ink. You take that check and place it in the acetone. And by the way, any one of us can buy acetone at Home Depot Lowe's. You don't need uh, CIA clearance to buy acetone. It sounds really harsh, but you just go out and buy it. And you'll see, once that check is uh, placed in the acetone, you'll see the, the ink come right up and they can write whatever they want on that. Now typically what they're gonna do is they're gonna keep the amount, probably, if it's like for your cable bill, they'll probably keep it the same, you know why? For those of you that don't check your your statements every month, you're gonna say, oh, I, I wrote it out to Time Warner Cable for $200. It's still clear for $200, but guess what? It wasn't made out to Time Warner Cable. Made out to the bad guy. So three months later, when Time Warner says that was three months into this whole process, you think you paid when in reality you didn't. It takes a while for this to catch up. Okay. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is uh, a video that I'm going to fast forward a little through, and I want anyone, everyone, to pay close attention. This is what's happening now. Chain. Where are we? Okay. This is live. This is. A real, not live, but this is a, a real, taken as evidence of a particular crime. You can just like fast forward to here. What? Oh, here, I'm sorry. I don't want to bore everybody. But well, watch what happens. Any street corner, right? New York City. Here's our victim. <clears throat> Someone please tell me what's going to happen here. Well, nothing violent happened. I'm not going to show you anything. But what's happening here, this is uh, what we call pattern 108. We have a team, two separate teams. One's driving around in this truck and the other one's driving around in the sedan. There's a senior that was just minding her own business over here. They call her over and they're gonna call her over under the guise of being doing something good. And they're gonna pray over her. And they're gonna put a necklace around her neck. Okay? Part of, as part of the prayer ceremony. But guess what? When they take the necklace off, what else are they taking off? Our jewelry. Okay? And there's also a lot of sleight of hand that goes on. It's not only necklaces, it's also watches and uh, bracelets as well. We have like a few incidents of this happening. So of course the senior thinks something good just happened, right? Someone prayed over them. They go back and until they realize that their jewelry is gone. And then you get the factors of shame and embarrassment. They don't want to report it. But if we don't, you don't report it, we don't know about it. We can't do anything about it. We can't devote resources to it. So if you're going to go out, the tips that we have, cover your jewelry. Don't wear your jewelry at all. You're gonna have to wear your jewelry, keep it covered. Keep, have rings, keep the stones facing inward. And obviously don't go up to a car if you don't know. Okay, again, my name is uh, Ray Morales. I'm a sergeant with the Crime Prevention Division. We're gonna be here for the, uh, I think it's another two days. 
So if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to um, field them now. If not, that's good too. What is the AARP fraud prevention number four? They show it on the screen. Like what also report there? the fraud. If it what happens to mm -hmm. it. If it happens to Eight seven seven nine zero eight three three six zero. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Group four five five. What is that number?